Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Ann Sokolos? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, consider supporting me on Patreon, and check out my podcast on YouTube, Bella Grande Media. I will put the relevant links in the description for this video. So first I'll look at the background of this case, then I'll move to the analysis. This case starts on the evening of August 27, 2019, near a United States Air Force listening station located in the RAF Crowton in Crowton, United Kingdom. A woman named Ann Sokolas, who was the wife of a CIA operative, was leaving the base with two of her three children in her vehicle. She had only been in the country for a few weeks. She was driving a Volvo XC90 SUV owned by her husband. The vehicle's steering wheel was located on the right side, which is normal for the UK. She exited the base and drove on the wrong side of the road, slamming her vehicle into a man riding his motorcycle about 1,200 feet from the exit of the base. The man on the motorcycle, 19-year-old Harry Dunn, was severely injured. He had multiple broken bones. Harry Dunn was legally operating his motorcycle. He was traveling within the speed limit and wearing a helmet. He was not on his phone, and he was not under the influence of substances. Harry Dunn would die of his injuries, but not before telling emergency responders that the SUV, driven by Ann Sokolos, was on the wrong side of the road. Ann initially cooperated with the authorities. She was given a breathalyzer test and was interviewed by the police. She admitted that she was driving on the wrong side of the road when she collided with Harry Dunn. The United States Embassy formally asserted diplomatic immunity on behalf of Anne. Representatives of the United Kingdom sought a waiver to immunity. They were trying to obtain an exception so they could file charges against her. The waiver was declined. Anne fled the UK 19 days after the collision. The parents of Harry Dunn said that they were informed by two attorneys that Anne did not have diplomatic immunity. Her husband worked for the CIA. He was not a diplomat. His parents visited the White House on October 15, 2019, and apparently interacted with Donald Trump for about 15 minutes. Trump told them that Anne was waiting in the next room. The attorney for Dunn's parents said that any meeting should take place on British soil. Trump would later say that the meeting with Dunn's parents was, quote, beautiful in a certain way, and that driving on the wrong side of the road is common in Europe because the roads are the opposite. The family said that Trump had intended to pay them as compensation for their loss. Trump would later say that when he met with Anne at the White House, she had a compelling story to tell. In December 2019, the prosecution in the UK charged Anne with causing a death by dangerous driving. The maximum penalty with this charge is 14 years in prison, but that sentence would be very unlikely under these circumstances. The sentencing guidelines for this offense suggest that if there are no aggravating circumstances, a penalty of one to two years is recommended. The equivalent crime in the United States would be vehicular homicide. Anne's lawyer responded by saying that the collision was a terrible but unintentional accident and her client would not return voluntarily to the United Kingdom. Her attorney felt as though a 14-year sentence was disproportionate in light of the circumstances of this case. The government of the UK, specifically the Home Office, formally requested Anne's extradition in January of 2020. The United States State Department responded by suggesting that extraditing the spouse of a former diplomat would establish an extraordinarily troubling precedent. The request, which they referred to as highly inappropriate, was denied. In February of 2020, it was reported that Anne Sokolos had previously been involved with the CIA. It appeared as though not everybody had been forthright about Anne's work at the time of Harry Dunn's death. On September 9, 2020, a lawsuit was filed in Virginia Federal Court against both Anne and Jonathan Sacklis. The action was for wrongful death. The lawsuit alleged that Anne caused Harry Dunn's death and did not call the authorities after the collision. It appears as though Jonathan was only named in the lawsuit because he owned the Volvo that was involved in the collision. On November 24, 2020, the High Court of Justice in London ruled that Anne did have diplomatic immunity 
at the time of Harry Dunn's death. In February of 2021, it was revealed that Anne was, in fact, an employee of the CIA. There was other interesting information from the court proceedings. Anne's attorney responded to a question about why Anne would not return to the UK by saying that she was afraid, with all the media attention, she would not get fair treatment. The attorney went on to say that Anne is apologetic and accepts full responsibility for causing the accident. The judge replied, accepting full responsibility doesn't mean you run away. It means you stay there and face it. You shouldn't overplay the full responsibility card. The judge ruled that the family of Harry Dunn could sue Anne for damages, but that Jonathan did not have any liability in this case. In March of 2021, Anne's attorney said that the charge pending against her in the UK would not usually result in a prison sentence if it had been filed in the United States. Therefore, her client was not inclined to return to the United Kingdom to face trial. She said that she would be willing to perform community service, make a contribution to Harry Dunn's memory, and meet his family. The lawyer also refuted items that were in the lawsuit, specifically this idea that Anne did not try to get help for Harry at the time of the collision. The attorney said that Anne flagged down the motorist who called the ambulance and alerted the police at the military base. Dunn's mother responded by saying that Anne must face the UK justice system. Now moving to my analysis. First, let's look at the accident itself. Even though Anne admitted that her behavior caused the death of Harry Dunn, that doesn't automatically mean she's guilty of a crime. The question becomes, was her behavior really reckless to the point where it approached intent? Let's look at the evidence toward both guilt and innocence. I'll start with the inculpatory evidence. Anne admitted being on the wrong side of the road. Harry Dunn said the same thing. Anne drove on the right side of the road in a right-hand drive vehicle. How did she not realize that something was off? From her vantage point, she could look down and see the shoulder of the roadway. I wonder why that didn't strike her as unusual. On the exculpatory side, we see that Anne was not familiar with driving on the left side of the road. She had only been in the UK for a few weeks. She wasn't speeding. She was not using substances. She was not texting or talking to somebody on her cell phone. And she collided with a motorcycle, which can be difficult to see. Now, of course, this collision occurred in the UK. But in the United States, wrong-way driving collisions are actually relatively common, and they rarely involve a criminal prosecution like what we see here. Usually it is considered a driving offense. There is often civil liability, of course, but usually not criminal liability. So what are my thoughts in this case? It seems as though this truly was a situation where Anne became confused or simply didn't remember that she was in the UK. Even still, it was her responsibility to drive on the correct side of the road. If she couldn't handle adapting to the laws of the UK, she should not have been operating a motor vehicle. It's my opinion that she probably is guilty, but I don't see this as a case that would involve any type of incarceration. Next, let's take a look at the extradition. This one, I think, is fairly straightforward. Anne Sokolos did have immunity at the time of Harry Dunn's death. Even the High Court of Justice agrees on this point. I don't think she should have had immunity, and under an agreement that was formed after the collision, people like her would not have it going forward, but she definitely did have it at the time of the collision. Moving to the next item, what should Anne Sokolos do? Should she stay in the United States or return to the UK and face justice? I think this case brings up an interesting dilemma. It juxtaposes asserting one's rights with accepting responsibility. I will look at both sides of this issue. On the one side, asserting one's rights, I think it's important to have a healthy distrust of the government. The full weight of the government comes down upon a defendant. Therefore, the defendant has every right to a vigorous defense. If the government wants to convict a citizen, sometimes they have to do it the hard way. If the citizen can beat the charge on a technicality, then they beat the charge. This is how the system works. It keeps the government honest. If Anne can escape criminal liability, some would say you can't really blame her. Now moving to the other side, accepting responsibility. Some could argue that Anne should waive her immunity and travel to the UK and face justice. Nobody would hold it against her. Her reputation has already been damaged through the reports that are public. It's not going to hurt her any more to be convicted of this offense in the UK if, in fact, she 
was convicted, there is little chance that she would spend any significant time in prison. And most importantly, returning to the UK would honor the family of Harry Dunn. They want Anne Sucklust to face justice. In a way, one could argue that the most empathic decision would be to face the penalty, to truly accept full responsibility. I think the federal judge was right when he said that Anne cannot say she's accepting full responsibility without going back to the UK. So if she doesn't go, she will always be the person who did not accept full responsibility. Perhaps Anne has forgotten about the victim. One could argue that an upstanding citizen would want to face justice. They would want to repay their debt to society, not through some self-imposed community service, but through a real justice system. No one can repay a debt by deciding for themselves the nature of the repayment. Sometimes it's not about what you can get away with, but rather what type of person you want to be. My opinion is that Anne should simply face justice. At the same time, I recognize that hardly anyone in her position would actually do that. Most people who are accused of a crime do not have the option of simply not going to the courthouse. When given the chance to have immunity, all those ideals like justice, responsibility, and empathy just go out the window. Sometimes justice really is a team sport. An individual, again, can't enforce it against themselves. Anne may be emotionally drawn to make things right, but logically it's probably hard to justify exposing yourself to prison time. I think the larger lesson of this case is that most people do not want to accept responsibility for their actions if it involves any type of significant penalty. There is no substitute for arresting people and compelling them to show up to court. We probably won't see any time when traffic enforcement is voluntary, like the traffic citation honor system. Instead of traffic signs that only indicate the speed limit, the signs would add something like, if you're going to drive over the speed limit, please turn yourself in at the nearest police station or download the Get Your Own Ticket app. The idea of an adversarial criminal justice system is something that cannot be easily disregarded. It can't be switched off. It's almost like if there was an apocalypse and the survivors were roaming around trying to gather resources. If they ran across a big pile of money, which of course at that time would be worthless, they would still grab it. It's just hardwired. Asking somebody to voluntarily go to prison is similar. Even if they know it's right, they will find a reason to avoid it. Those are my thoughts in the case of Anne Sokolos. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.